Hi guys, it's that time again. Which is better? The fourth dimension by hypocrisy or Dracon draconian times by paradise lost? And we're going to start right now. <coughs> to some plans, simplifying the logo and abandoning surreal cover paintings equates selling out. However, this is not the case with hypocrisy. Those beginnings, the new stylings turn out to be surprisingly successful. During this, the year separating Obscurum of Senum and the Fourth Dimension, a lot of changes took place. For example, vocalist Massey Broberg said goodbye to the group, and Peter Targren fully took the position of guitarist vocalist, and stylishly, the Swedes went towards the emerging melodic death metal scene. So far, they were worthy of praise. The departure in this direction can divide opinion amongst fans in the case of the Fourth Dimension. Nevertheless, the trio turned out really well on this type of changes. They managed to create one of the, their best records in the discography. And the reason is very simple. Well written compositions, a fair bit of brutality, and not bending with the melodies. So Hypocrisy decided to play closer to such names as At The Gates and Edge of Sanity, but at the same time retain their own identity and some previously developed patents. The fourth dimension is that perfect lip between traditional death metal playing and expressive melodies. The ideal proportions in this respect are presented here. For example, Reborn, the biggest hit. Mind Corruption, this one too. The title track, with one match keys. Path to Babylon, with a nice melody. Orgy in Blood, the most brutal on the list. Slaughtered, with a marching beat. Or the North Wind, a similar matter here with their Slaughtered, which is generally quite a lot. This album appears as a real rarity and a piece of well thought out mel melodic death metal, where the second part of this genre is no exaggeration. Overall, Hypocrisy presented a much more interesting idea for their music than before. And also, having Peter as vocalist slash guitarist makes sense for the functionality of the group. So, shifting gears to Draconian Times, now, all you need is a simple reminder that Dr Draconian Times Paradise Lost is arguably the band's high point in their career. Paradise Lost coined the term gothic metal with their second album, Gothic, but it didn't really show signs of the genre until albums such as Shades of God and Icon. Paradise Lost ultimately mastered the genre they pioneered in 1995 with their album Draconian Times, which has sold over a million albums worldwide and this took the Metallica influence to a whole other level. Draconian Times contains a whole new level of melody. On the previous album Icon, the Hetfield-esque vocals were on display but Draconian Times, they are more diverse. Each of the first four tracks are classics. Enchantment starts off with diversity in Nick Holmes' vocal range such as a more traditional gothic baritone which can be found on other songs on the album. Hello Land is an excellent number that is reminiscent of Enter Sandman, but with a mix of keyboards and a really sick guitar solo. The Last Time is another excellent song which sounds like a cross between Metallica and Depeche Mode. These two bands with Godflesh are probably the big, biggest influences on this album. However, the song Forever Failure may have depressing vocals, but when you read closely, the lyrics are about motivations that may help anyone get on with their day. Even Paradise Lost, who are still active in this terms of writing, knew that they'll be writing uplifting songs on this album. Nick Holmes even had choral effects on this album, which didn't detract from the quality of the album. His best vocal performance is probably on Shadow Kings, where his vocals are their most emotional. Drummer Lee Morris shows off some of his industrial influences on songs like The Last Time and Hands of Reason. Who knows, he may even be a closet Godflesh fan. Guitarist Gregor McIntosh and Aaron Ande play some airful riffs, but on tracks like Hello Land, they dish out some really groovy riffs. However, some tracks like Elusive Cure display uses of acoustic guitars, which adds a bit of atmosphere to the songs. Stephen Emerson's bass perfectly blends with songs like You Have a Change and Jaded, which even adds more atmosphere to Draconian Times. Even the keyboards provided by session musician Andrew Holdsworth are beautiful on this album with Hallowed Lad in particular receiving praise in this regard. It's just such a beautiful album and the same can be said for the artwork as well. Most people would point out type of negative for being the best band within the gothic metal genre. 
This is also gothic metal done right. Draconian Time stands as tall as Paradise Lost peak in their three decade career. Now, if you're trying to get into Paradise Lost, Gothic, or Death Doom in general, but need help transitioning, this will be a good place to start and work your way backwards. It's the perfect album to get into Gothic Metal or do Death Doom, and arguably one of the greatest Doom Metal albums ever made. A stone cold classic. And on that note, let me know what album you thought was better in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.